Some of my favorite music visualizers to make in Blender are driving animations, mainly because they always turn out so cinematic. To make visualizers like these, it typically consists of the following. A car, a character, and some sort of a landscape with a road. You can find a ton of free car models online on CG Trader or TurboSquid. For this visualizer, I use this Alfa Romeo model. The next part is to rig the car model so I can animate the movement. Rigging a car is actually pretty straightforward if you use the Rig a Car add-on. You can watch this tutorial that shows you how to quickly do that. If you don't want to go through the trouble of rigging the car yourself, you can also download this free Mercedes car model that already comes rigged. Now once I have the car rigged, next I need to select the rig and then go into pose mode. If I select the widget at the bottom and start moving the car, you'll notice that the car moves forward with the wheels turning as well. Now I can add a keyframe on the first frame, then I can go to the 300th frame and move the car by a couple hundred meters and add a keyframe there as well. When I press play, the car will move forward. For this animation, I wanted my car to move at a constant speed, so I can change this by going into the graph editor and then set the interpolation to linear. Next, I add a camera into the scene and move it so it faces the car. Here, I also make sure to change the aspect ratio to 1080 by 1920, which is the aspect ratio used for Reels and TikTok. Now I can parent the camera to the rig of the car, so as the car moves, the camera will follow as well. For these car animations, I like using the fisheye lens. To do this, first I need to switch to render mode. Then I can go into the camera settings and change the camera type to panoramic and change the field of view to 360. It's important to note that this effect only works in cycles and not in EV. Before adding keyframes for my camera, I like to add a temporary road into the scene using a plane. Then I start to move the camera around my car at different points in the timeline and keyframe it. This part usually takes a lot of experimentation and trial and error until I'm happy with how the camera movement looks. I also like to add some camera shake to my car animations as well. To do this, I like to use the free camera shakeify add-on. I then add in a new camera shakes preset. Once again, I like to experiment with different shake types until it gives me the effect I'm going for. Lastly, to really make the driving feel realistic, I like to add in motion blur as well. To do this, I go into the render properties and then check the motion blur option and change the shutter value to around 0.8. Higher values will result in more blur in the final render. Now the next part is to add in my character. To create my character, I use FaceGen with DAS Studio. Then I import my character into a new Blender project where I add my rig and hair. I've covered this whole process in my character creation series. So if you want to learn how to create custom characters with custom clothing, I would highly recommend checking that out. Once I'm happy with how my character looks, I then use the append option to import the character from the new Blender file. It's important to note if the character is either too big or too small. Instead of scaling the character, I scale the rest of the scene instead. I find that scaling the character causes too many issues later on when I import my character into Marvelous Designer. Now from here, I first need to parent my character rig to my car rig to make sure that the character moves with the car. Then when my character rig is selected, I go into pose mode and select all the bones. I add a keyframe for the location and rotation of each bone. This ensures that my character is in A pose for the first frame. Then I go to the 20th frame and move my character roughly in the position of the driver's seat. Then I enter pose mode once again and start to pose my character in the driving position. Here it also helps to unhide specific bones to get more control over posing the character. Once I'm happy with my pose, I select all the bones and add a keyframe for them on the 20th frame. At this point, I also need to change the initial keyframe for the car and move it to the 20th frame as well. Now if I press play, my character will go from A pose to my driving pose and then start moving with the car. It also helps to place another camera inside the car and parent it to the car rig. This camera helps give me the view of the character while the car is moving. Then with the auto king turned on, I add in additional keyframes to different bones to really help bring the character to life. Adding in little micro movements adds a lot more realism to the final animation. The next part is to give the character clothing. To do this, I first need to export an limbic version of the character. Now I need to import this Olympic file into a new Blender project and center it so the character is at the origin. This ensures that when I import my character into Marvel's Designer, it's at the origin. I also want to make sure that I clear all the parents so the character stays in one place when the animation starts. Then I export it as an Olympic file and an FBX file.
Now opening up Marvel's designer, I first import the FBX version of the character and start to create the outfit. And once again, I've covered this whole process in my character creation series. Once I'm done with my outfit, I import my limbic file into the scene and then simulate the clothing with the animation. Then I export the clothing as an limbic file and import it into Blender. I adjust the clothing until it's in the right spot and then add in the corresponding texture maps that were generated by Marvel's designer. Once again, I parent the clothing to the car rig to make sure that it moves with the character and the car. For the background of the scene, I usually search online for a landscape that I want my animation to take place in. For this animation, I wanted to use a simple desert landscape. For the lighting, I used a sky texture and then played around with the parameters until I was happy with how the lighting looked. And lastly, I added some accessories to the scene and made any changes to the camera movement until I was happy with how everything looked. And finally, I rendered the animation. And that is it for this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more content like this, then please like and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next video.